My ultimate job with every client is longevity, or more directly, living at peak performance for maximum length. Well, there's a new study out concerning the brain and how to maintain cognitive function past 100. That and some of the things that we already know today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Garrett Williamson, president of Personal Edge Fitness. I sure appreciate you joining us today, talking about, yet again, one of my favorite subjects, which happens to be time passing on a calendar and the fact that it does not cause deterioration. Now, if you have any questions about this, and I do talk about this particular topic a lot, but if you have any questions dealing with anything in health, fitness, and wellness, especially if it's a myth or something that you've heard a long time and you don't know why we perpetuate these thoughts or these beliefs, please contact me, Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. Obviously, that's my email address. That's also our website, personaledgefitness.com, and our Facebook page. Now, if you'd rather call and speak to one of our trainers or one of our directors or one of our exercise specialists concerning anything in health, fitness, and wellness, you can reach us at our mobile location at 251-341-0927 or at the Eastern Shore at 251-651-0927. I came across an article in the New York Times that came out just a week or so ago titled Living to 100 and Staying Sharp. Now, this is an article done on the personal health section by a journalist named Jane Brody. What's interesting about this, and I'm always drawn to these things. I think if you're a fan of the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast, you know that anything dealing with aging or studies on aging is something that I just gravitate to. And mainly because y'all understand, if you've listened to my uh, podcast, you've listened to the series on the lie of aging, you understand that aging has nothing to do about it's not a determinant of fitness. It's not a determinant about your activity level and what have you. It is just time passing on a calendar and does not cause, automatically cause degeneration. In the articles that I find, all these articles, none of them deal with, oh, by the way, we have a new study that says that time passing on a calendar causes you to deteriorate. There's not a single one because there's not a single clinical study that proves time passing on a calendar cause to you to degenerate. Instead, what do these articles say is these articles come out and say, look, there's new research. Then typically they say that there's new research that proves that the things that we believe that genetically happened, in other words, you just did your brain just deteriorates because time passes. We find out that it's not. It happens to be lifestyle that causes these things and things that we can affect, things that we can change, nutrition, activity level. And yet again, Miss Brody has done a great job covering a, a, some research that was done in the Netherlands dealing with having a sharp mind past 100 years old. Looking back across the Personal Edge Fitness podcast, I've noticed that I've done quite a few podcasts dealing with the mind, the aging brain. I did one on Alzheimer's and dementia. I actually had a a neurologist that was on with me to speak about that. It was on my radio show and on my podcast dealing with Alzheimer's and dementia and what have you. And this is something that if you ask a man on the street, you ask him if whether or not that is age related, that's going to cause or it's somewhat inevitable. And the majority of people are going to tell you yes, that dementia or some sort of brain abnormality dealing with cognitive function, Alzheimer's, dementia, what have you, is going to inherently happen to everybody. That's simply not true. And we're finding out more and more that there are things that we do, they're they're doing with our activity, our mindset, our lifestyle, or our nutrition that have to do with the aging brain. And this study is no different. But before I go into that, I'll tell you some of the details of the study that I think was fantastic. And I don't want to get too deep into it because it, it can get a bit boring. But I also want to to remind you that, and I'm going to speak about this today in the podcast, that don't forget, we're always looking for new research. You know, we find this in every aspect of health, fitness, and wellness. What's the new exercise? What's the new diet? What's the new food, the magic food, whatever? And we're in a constant state of trying to find this new and different thing. And too many times we forget the things that we already know. 
I think a lot of times we're looking for these answers, these new things, because we're hoping it's going to be something that, hey, maybe I don't have to put any effort into this, and I can just find this magic thing, this magic food, this magic activity, and it'll cure all my ills, and I can stop all these other things. And too many times, we throw out a lot of things that we already know, that if we were to use those and continue doing these things that we already know that have been proven over and over and over again, that, hey, we could live longer. We could maintain cognitive function. We could keep physically active. So keep that in your mind. This was conducted by a research team at Vraj University in Amsterdam. They took 340 Dutch centenarians. Now these are these are 340 individuals that had reached the age of 100. They were all living independently and they were tested and shown to be cognitively healthy when they enrolled. So they're over 100 years old and they're talking cognitively healthy. And what they mean by that is basically they had like a brain of a 30 year old. That's amazing off the bat. I mean, 340 Dutch centenarians. Now, you're going to see this number drastically drop, but you got to keep in mind now we're talking about individuals that were over the age of 100. They had 79 participants who neither died nor dropped out of the study who returned for repeated cognitive testing over an average follow up of 19 months. Now, what they found were that these participants experienced no decline in major cognitive measures except for slight loss in memory function. Basically, they performed as if, again, as if they were 30 years younger in overall cognition. Now, let me repeat now. We're talking about individuals that entered the study, entered the study over 100 years old. After they came back for repeated testing, they showed no cognitive decline. Now, what this is amazing about this, it's easy to point out, well, that's not everybody. Well, that's a small sample. Well, that's a, the, what that does prove, and this is what I say over and over and over again, is we hear about people that live to be these miraculous ages and they're able to do all kinds of amazing things. And too many times we think of, oh, well, that's just a strange anomaly. Well, if you have a myriad of these anomalies, which we do, then it's possible for anybody. Instead of inherently believing that we're all going to decline, if we can prove that it's been done, then we can prove it can be done with everybody, which is why they, of course, research these individuals. Now, I'm going to cut to the chase here. I'm going to jump right to the end. You want to know why. why. Why are these people able to maintain that? Of course, that's what they were looking at. And they weren't looking at like an observational study, which is what I get so upset about all the time. We draw these ridiculous conclusions without actually looking at what they did. And of course, I'm jumping, what, what did they do? Simple. There's a lot of things that we already know. They were exercising regularly. They were maintaining a healthy weight. They were not smoking. They were maintaining a, a balanced diet. They were doing things that are cognitively new and challenging for the brain, like learning a new language uh, uh, or a musical instrument. They also were, were, there's two other things that I want to point out the, at the end of this, but I'm going to go off of that last one there, or actually all of these. I put all that in the same box and say they were continuing to live. They were doing a lot of things they did all their life. They just continued doing it. One of the most important is continuing to learn. I did a recent podcast where I talked about having a mission, having a, having a goal, having a purpose, and how, how important having a purpose was to keeping from declining. The example I used in that podcast were so many of my clients that have re reached retirement age and faced with, you know, who am I going to be? Who am I going to become? And the ones that have, have successfully entered retirement and are successful in their retirement are the ones that are continuing to learn. A continue, they have a purpose. They have a mission. They're continuing to live. And I think that's so important. So, you know, that's why I jumped to the chase on this. It, it wasn't some new uh, supplement that they found in the Amazon rainforest that these 340 Dutch people and these 79 Dutch people that continued in the study were taking. No, it was a lot of things that we already knew, which was great. Now, the other thing that was pointed out in the study, and, and actually I believe I knew this, but most people don't. And I think I actually read this recently and speaking to one of my clients who happens to be a EENT, how important having good hearing and good eyesight, but especially hearing, is important. Too many people try to stay away from the whole hearing aid idea and, and not purchasing hearing aids or taking a doctor's advice as far as hearing aids are concerned. Well, decreased hearing is attributed to decreased cognitive function. Think about it. If you're missing out on things, then you're not continuing to learn. You're not stimulating the brain. Therefore, the less stimulation of the brain is like a muscle. The less stimulation of the brain, less the stimulation of the muscle, the more that muscle and a brain deteriorates. So, you know, maintaining good hearing was very important. And for that matter, maintaining good vision. If you can't see it, then you're not going to try to do any kind of cognitive processing of what you're looking at or the details of what you're looking at or the situation that you may enter into if you could see okay. 
Therefore, you're going to have a decreased cognitive function. Therefore, you can have a decreased brain, aging brain, whatever you want to call it. And I thought those were, were very significant. Now, I started off this podcast saying, hey, look, there's a new study and there's some new information out. And this is new. I mean, the fact that this many people, the centenarians, were studied for this kind of cognitive function is new. And I'm glad that this research is continuing to go on. But I also mentioned that too many times we throw out what we already know. And let's look at what we already know. And I've, I've covered this in other podcasts. I know, like I say, we throw this out. Number one that we know as far as aging is concerned is increasing muscle mass. That doesn't change. We've known that for years. Dr. Kenneth Cooper started the study in aging in 1969. I've known it pretty much my entire career. I've been in the business for over 31 years. And I've, I've been speaking on his studies and his studies about uh, the fact that we can grow muscle at the same rate, at the same everything, no matter the time on the calendar. Number two is the need for protein. I mean, this is breaking down to the very, very simple aspects of nutrition, but protein is needed to grow muscle, period. We know that. We know that at every single age. But yet, over 46% of seniors do not get enough protein. Bingo! If you want to know why you're deteriorating muscle, not using, you're not growing muscle, and your and your muscle that you are using, whether you're exercising or just walking to the mailbox, isn't replenishing. There it is. There's no mystery there. We've known this. We've known this for years. We don't need to do too many deep studies on it. You know, making sure that you're maintaining your level of protein is extremely, extremely important. Lack of movement. I just said we can regrow muscle at any age. Well, lack of movement. The fact that we don't do lateral movement. The fact that we decrease our activities is going to cause muscles to deteriorate. Your, your body's going to simply do its systems check and say, look, we haven't used that that uh, hip muscle in a while, there's no reason to maintain it, therefore degenerate it, use it for energy. You know, lack of movement causes this thing. Again, something we've known for a long time. But let's get back to cognitive function. Let's talk about that. This is what the study dealt with is cognitive function. And that's a big fear for a lot of people, for a lot of fit individuals, is, is they're worried that at some point in time, my brain is going to deteriorate automatically. That's what I've heard. Well, probably one of the biggest things you can do for it. And one of the biggest things I talk about, and I, and I talk about it in every single podcast, and I'll probably continue to talk about it and continue to push it, continue to push it with every single one of my clients, because too many of us, the majority of adults do not take this serious enough. And you want to talk about the effect it has on cognitive function. It's incredible. But what is it? Of course. Yes, Garrett's going to talk about water. Can you imagine that? Here's another fact that you may not know about water. You know that I'm going to say that over over 70% of adults don't drink enough water. Over 46% of children don't drink enough water. Why is it important for cognitive function? 80% of the brain is water. 80% of your brain is water. Over 73% of your lungs are water. Your heart tissue, heart tissue is water. Even 31% of your bone is water. And then when you talk about the water that you take in, 30% of the water that you take in is used by your brain. It's not just used for maintaining the color of the brain. I mean, it's used for cognitive function. You want to do a little test on yourself? I don't really recommend dehydrating yourself, but you want to do a little test? Next time you go to negotiate something or do something with the causes heavy cognitive function. I talk to this with my clients that have big negotiations or deals they're trying to close or if they're trying to noodle on a certain uh, project. When I have kids that have they are involved in exam week, it's the thing that's when I tell them all, oh, look, make sure you've got a lot of water on board before you start really challenging the brain. But the little test that you can do, and I did it to myself inadvertently, where I was actually writing a toast one time and I can usually do this by driving. We have a bridge that goes from Mobile to the Eastern Shore, or Daphne area. It goes across Mobile Bay. And by the time I started that bridge, I would have the toast in my mind completely written. It was rather long and involved and somewhat rhymed. There was a, there was a lot to it. And I'd have it completely written in my head by the time I got across the bay. One day I was working back-to-back -back clients and wasn't able to maintain my water, did not maintain my water, and I was somewhat dehydrated. I couldn't get the first line as I drove across the bay, and I did it year after year after year where I had that, that was my plan. I'd write the toast in my head on the way across the bay. I got across the bay, got in a hotel room, down 32 ounces of water, and 15 minutes after that, I had the entire toast written. You can do that. I mean, if you're dehydrated and you can't think of something, you can't remember somebody's simple name, drink some water. Watch what happens. So anyway, okay, I'll get off my water soapbox here but I was so enthralled with this study I thought it was fantastic and you're going to hear me every time I see one of these come out I'm going to come out and talk about it that deals with with aging and finding out hey all this stuff that we automatically believe about us deteriorating is not 
true. We're chipping away at some of these beliefs. And again, we're chipping away at the aging brain and the fact that dementia is inevitable. I've given you a lot of tools there that you can actually use, that you can take home and use and maintain your longevity. Hey, if you have any questions about that, please reach out to me and contact me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at PersonalEdgeFitness.com. You can also reach me on our website, PersonalEdgeFitness.com, and also Personal Edge Fitness, which is our Facebook page. Thank you so much for listening. If you do like the podcast, please consider subscribing and share it with your friends. We'd love to help others reach their level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.